Leela pressed her back against the door. Silence welcomed her in the dark apartment. She closed her eyes, trying to shed the remnants of the day's humiliation. Her fury-fueled headache throbbed inside her skull. Joe. Her jaw clenched, the worst goddamn agent in Los Angeles. Leila shut her eyes tighter, wanting the day to vanish behind the door. She blindly reached for her phone and her purse. The handset lit blue against the surrounding blackness. 11.38 p.m. She pushed her body away from the door, threw her bag on the floor, kicked her shoes off, and stumbled through the darkness. Cheese fries, or something hotter with that. The words, repeated like Chinese water torture, one drop at a time, slamming between her eyes. The single line of dialogue mocked her, worsened only by the images of the skin-bearing, Hooters-inspired wardrobe she had to wear all day. Exposure, darling, we need to get you more exposure. Joe's words, so fitting. It'll be good for your career. The day's role, an anonymous waitress who needed to get her ass slapped at the end of the restaurant scene, take after take after take. She headed for the bathroom to wash off the heavy caked on makeup. Her phone beeped a new message. Where are you? Oh shit. Leela groaned. She pressed a hand against her temple, noticing Armand's many missed calls. Not now. I can't deal with you two right now. She typed a quick message response. Exhausted. About to crash. I'll see you at the airport in the morning. She pressed send, not wanting to tangle with him in her agitated frame of mind. She dropped her phone on the floor in the middle of the hallway. She pulled her shirt over her head and peeled off her jeans. Her bra and underwear marked her trek to the bathroom. In the shower, Leela scalded her skin, deliberately trying to burn away the feelings. Thirty minutes passed before she emerged from the steaming bathroom with a towel around her body, her wet hair sticking to her bare back and shoulders. The phone's ringtone cut through her semi-calm state of mind. Still lying on the floor where she had left it, the ring didn't mask the sound of the front doorknob turning. Her skin prickled terror, coursing her veins. I'd locked it. I'd locked the door. I know I'd locked it. She clutched the towel around her chest. Her heart pounded, pumping hard against the fear. The only weapon in her proximity was a bottle of hairspray. Leila tiptoed to the hallway from where she had an unblocked view across the apartment. She stood still. The door swung open. The phone stopped ringing. Armand, she gasped, relief pushing her against the wall. He stepped inside, dressed in a suit, his blackberry in his left hand, a laptop case slung on his shoulder. He looked at her, expressionless. I was calling you, he said. You scared the hell out of me. She exhaled a shaky breath with a hand on her stomach. What, what are you doing here? Put his bag down, closed the door behind him. You don't seem too happy to see me. He glanced at her clothes scattered haphazardly on the floor. His expression hardened, his eyes flicking past her towards the bathroom. Were you in a rush to get your clothes off? The question subtext stabbed at Leela. Her, his recurring suspicion sparked her anger. Biting back her own venom, she stepped sideways to unblock his view of the bathroom and answered evenly. Do you want to have a look? He rubbed his forehead, slowly shaking his head. He put his spare keys on the side table and bent forward to take off his shoes. Where were you? I've been calling you for the last four hours. I'm just going to pause here. Uh, I wanted to give you guys an understanding of what's about to happen. Um, Lila and Armand are a couple, and obviously there's some tension between them. Um, he surprised her, he thinks, and she's surprised, <laughs> not so happily. I'm just going to move forward a little bit. They decide to have a glass of wine on the couch just to talk. Um, I didn't mean to scare you, babe. He handed her the filled glass and moved to fill his own. Leela inhaled slowly and shook her head. He raised his glass to tap hers. Can't do that on Skype. The smile didn't reach his eyes. Leela took a sip of her wine and swirled it gently around her mouth. Good choice, she said, making an effort to lighten up, to erase the day's negativity from her mind. He leaned back on the sofa and rested his hand on her thigh. Leela touched his fingers. I'm glad you're here, she said softly. He smiled and pulled her closer to him. He kissed her forehead while she stared into her glass. The shoot was terrible today, she mumbled. What happened? I'm just so tired. She twirled the wine in the glass and took another sip. Her mom nodded and urged her to continue. Leela stared again into the burgundy liquid. She needed to vent. I don't know what I'm doing here. She shook her head and slowly unloaded the details of the day shoot. The scant wardrobe, the director's humiliating instructions. Joe's words. I just can't catch a break in this town. Armand's body stiffened. He leaned forward to refill his glass. After a pause, he spoke in a low voice. How long is this going to go on? Leela watched him tilt the bottle. What do you mean? He kept his eyes on the glass, filling it with little room to air the wine. Do you have a deadline or a goal in mind for all this? Leela's brow creased. She felt confused by the unsympathetic response. Joe's sending me on some commercial auditions, she responded, chewing her lower lip. 
and then pilot season after that. He scratched his double jaw. So these highly coveted roles, like today's, he added glancing sideways. You plan on doing them forever? The edge in his tone caught her off guard. She narrowed her eyes, trying to read his stoic expression. Were you drinking before you got here? Took another drink from his glass. She sensed the warning signs of an impending confrontation. Where is this coming from? He, re he raised his brow and snorted. Reality. What? Leela frowned. It's coming from the hard truth, Leela. He shrugged. Why don't you look at it? What the hell is that supposed to mean? She pushed away from him with her feet. His lip curled in disgust. You're playing some slut waitress to be groped by zealist actors, coming home at midnight after God knows what else, he grimaced. And I'm supposed to be totally okay with everything? He stared at her angry, angrily. What the fuck am I supposed to do? Blood rushed to her temples, which were throbbing with near-blinding urgency. She tried to maintain a level tone, her anger fusing with confusion. Why are you so angry? He turned to look at her. I've been calling you all night. I have no idea where you are, what you're doing, who you're with. His voice rose to a snarl. And now I have to hear you tell me that this is my job. I'm an actor, Leila screamed. You've known this for two years. She stood up in front of him, slamming her glass on the coffee table. Don't you dare insult me. You know I'm doing the best I can. I can't control this indecent past, feeling the rage in her response. Fuck you. She turned on her heel and headed to the bedroom. Armand bolted after her, stopping her by the arm just as she passed the kitchen. Don't walk away, in her biceps. We're going to talk about this. Leila writhed in her grip, fear replacing her anger. She didn't answer, afraid to provoke him further. Aren't you disgusted? He glared down at her. Don't you feel ashamed? What? She whispered. I didn't do anything. He threw his glass at the sink. The pieces shattered across the surface, scattering over the counter and the floor. The wine sprayed like a bloody gunshot. We let cringe. That you're just glorified sexual meat. No one gives a fuck about your acting. They want to see some skin. He let go of her arm. Nothing is going to change, Lila. He took a step back ever since you took that role. His lip curled. I sleep with him in rehearsals too? He threw his hands in the air. Your career is prostituting you and you're letting it with open arms. Unwelcome tears rushed down Leila's cheeks. The shit you call a profession these days, it's repulsive. Armand shook his head. You embarrass me, Leila. Fred, leave right now. Armand grabbed her arm and clenched her biceps with excruciating force. She held back a whimper when he shook her, nearly lifting her off the ground. Why, he learned. Are you expecting someone? Who are you waiting for? Armand, get out, she screamed through her tears. Right now you're drunk. I don't want to look at you. So that's the beginning of the chaos that ensues in the rest of this book. <laughs>